Hello, welcome back to my channel. Firstly, I'd like to say thank you and welcome to the few new subscribers I've got recently. I'm not sure how you found me, um, but I'm glad you did. And hopefully you'll be glad you did as well. So yeah, thank you. It's always good to have more subscribers. So, clutter, clearing clutter and mental health. You might not immediately put those two things together, but I think there's something in it, personally. I mean, I know that if my house is looking cluttered and it's untidy, it bothers me. Whereas if everything's tidy, I feel better. Now, that might be to do with the negative self-talk that might go on if the place is untidy. You know, like, uh, why are you tidying up, Coral? Why are you being so lazy? What's wrong with you? Because, you know, a few of us have got that kind of neg negative chatter in our mind, which is never helpful. So perhaps having a clear space just stops that for a while. But another reason is, is to do with energy. Now everything is made up of energy. And that is science. It's not fluffy nonsense. So if you've got a lot of clutter, it becomes kind of heavy, stagnant energy. So if you've got a lot of stagnant energy in your house, then it probably will have an effect on your mental health, which in turn can affect your physical health. Um, I wanted to mention this book. Hopefully that's the right way around. If not, I'm sure you can read it backwards. But clear your clutter with... I never know how to say this, but I think it's feng shui. Oh, feng Shui? I don't know. But anyway, I'm sure you know what I mean. By Karen Kingston. And it's a book I've had for years and years and years. And it's, actually, it's actually 20 years old as this book. I don't think I've had it that long, but I've had it a fair few years. Not that that's relevant to anything, but... It's an easy book to read. You know, chapters are quite short. It's simple English, no fancy language, straight to the point, and it's... I think potentially it's life-changing, it's a book like this. And there's lots of examples in it of people she's worked with who have cleared clutter. It's had, you know, a significant impact on the life. You know, money's come to people out of the blue. People have lost weight even. And I guess if you look at sort of clutter as holding on to things, but a lot of the time we hold on to things for, well, because we think that it'll, it'll come in useful one day. That's a common one, isn't it? Yeah, I don't want to throw it out because I might need it. What, so that piece of string that's been in that drawer for the past two years, you think you're going to need that, do you? <laughs> There's a good chance you're not going to. You've not needed it up to press, you probably won't need it. But lots of things we hold on to because we think we'll need them. And yes, maybe we've had the situation where we've finally got rid of something and then a week later we've needed it. <laughs> Now, she would say, and I'd agree, that um, we've created that situation because we had that belief that if I throw it away, I'll need it. We've actually created that situation because our thoughts do create our situations. Our thoughts create our life. However, if that situation has happened to you, you know, how did you deal with it? D did life end as we know it? You know, did your head explode? No, I'm, I'm assuming not. Uh, what happened is that you just dealt with the situation. You either borrowed something off somebody else, or you bought it again, or saw it cheap in a charity shop, or whatever. You found a way around that situation. It wasn't the end of the world. And yet, when we hold on to things because, oh, I'm not coming under, it, it, it's, it's like, well, that, that's a fear belief, isn't it? It's not a trust that... If I need something, I'll find it, I'll have it, somebody will lend me it, I'll buy it, it'll come into my life. We don't have that belief. It's like, oh no. But that is, that's it, that's coming from fear. And we can choose to say something like, all that I need comes to me. All that I need to know is revealed to me. And I know that it sounds kind of 
corny, cheesy affirmations. But most things that we believe have come from repeated thoughts, which are what affirmations are. Where affirmations tend to be positive, but we've, you know, often had a lot of negative affirmations that we've said over and over and over again throughout our life and that becomes our reality and then we don't see that it can be any different but it all just started as a thought and yeah we have experiences but then like I say our thoughts about life create our experiences so we have these experiences and then we think well obviously it's true then you know I believe I'm stupid and they treated me like I'm stupid therefore I am stupid it's true I am stupid but no they treated you as you like you're stupid because you believe that you're stupid anyway that's kind of digressing the point is we can trust in life we don't have to hold on to things if we trust that we will always have what we need it's called the law of attraction and there's plenty of information about the law of attraction another reason we hold on to things is they've got sentimental value and I'm not saying just get rid of everything, but if it's taking up a lot of space, if it's maybe dragging on your energy a bit, or a lot, then maybe you need to change that situation. It's like photographs are something that a lot of us will hold on to. I mean, the newer, ge younger generation probably won't because all their photographs are on their phone. It's all, it's all digital now, isn't it? But if you're sort of my generation, like 35, um, then you'll have photographs probably which I'm betting are not something that you look at regularly I've got a couple of photo albums which I never look at but I keep hold of them they're in a box in the cupboard <laughs> it's like why have them so that I can look at them at some point you know maybe next week next year ten years who knows but if I'm not enjoying it looking at it, loving it, then why am I holding on to it? Karen Kingston in her book says, you know, you can, these days you can scan pictures, you can scan them and save them on your computer if you must have them. Fair enough, if you can't let go of them, but if you've got lots and lots and they're in a box in a cupboard, you're not loving them, are you? You're not loving them, you're not enjoying them. You know, if you had a partner who you locked in the cupboard <laughs> and brought out, you know, every few months or every few years, nobody would say, you really love that person, I can tell. No, they'd probably have you locked up. But anyway, I'm sure you, you can get the point that I'm trying to make. We keep things, we hold on to things for sentimental reasons and then we're actually not enjoying those things. Or keep things because we think they might come in and date and actually they haven't done for months or years. It's liberating to get rid of things especially if you're holding on to things through fear. And certainly Western society is about acquisition. I think that's the right word. Acquiring things, having things, because we think it, it gives us worth to have things. The more we have, the more worth we have. Well, no, that's BS, isn't it, really? Because if all those things disappeared in a fire, would that mean that we have no worth anymore? Well, of course not. So, Look at the things that you've got and really work out what you need, what you use. And if, if there's things that you don't really need and you don't really use, get shut of them. Because letting go means you trust that you'll be okay. If you don't have those 28 boxes of crap in your house, you're going to be okay. You'll, you'll survive. It'll be fine. I mean, I, if I've been a collector of anything, it's been books over the years. I like books. But now I have a Kindle and an Amazon Fire, so that's, I get e-books. Um, so I can have hundreds or even thousands, I don't know, in one place. But getting rid of all those books was liberating for me. And I haven't missed any of them. You know, there haven't been a point where I thought, oh, I'll just get that. Oh, I can't get that book. I've given it away. Well, actually, I sold them. Because you can sell your books online, you don't get a lot for some of them. It might be like 20p or less sometimes, but for other books you can get a fiver. And that's where most of my books went. So I don't know, maybe I made 50 quid. 
which obviously is a tiny fraction of what they all cost me. <laughs> but the point is, I got something back from them and I cleared a space on my landing and suddenly my landing was light and airy and bright and I could walk down it without bumping into the bookshelves and feel so much better. And that affects your mental health. It just, it, it lightens things. Just kind of going off on a, a little bit of a tangent, sort of, but I worked with, well, I met a client years ago when I was a housing support worker and walked into his bedsit. It was a bedsit, so not a lot of space. Uh, with my manager and my mouth just fell open. The state of his flat bedsit, it was horrendous. There was stuff everywhere. It was piled high, dirty, dank, dark, because the curtain was kind of half closed. It didn't smell great and he had depression. Now, I think, you know, his depression created that situation, but one affects the other. Being in that situation would not have helped his mental health. But no, his depression came first. Well, he was in a bit of denial really about his mental health. He didn't really think he was depressed. He had a mental health issue. And he, he just didn't think, he couldn't see the state of his bedsit either. He was like, oh, he's just a bit, he's a bit of a clean, a bit of a clean round, <laughs> you think. <laughs> Actually, I've written a sto I've written a story about him. I, I've got a, a book of short stories. I published on Amazon. I don't shout about it because I'm not very confident with my writing. I think I can string a sentence together, <laughs> but I'm no J.K. Rowling. But if you're interested in having a look at that, the, it's it's all my stories have kind of got a twist ending because I kind of like twist endings. So, yes, I've written a story about him. Obviously not his real name or anything, because it's confidentiality issues. Yeah, I'll put the link be below. Anyway, clear your clutter. That's the message. Clear your clutter. And if, you're, if you are depressed, obviously doing anything can feel like hard work. And clearing clutter can be like pff, way down on your list of priorities. But if you start with something small, maybe a work surface, I mean, just give yourself 15 minutes. Right, 15 minutes, I'm going to do a bit of clearing. Because, you know, if you have a lot of clutter, you can look around and think, oh my God, there's no way. I can't do it. It's too overwhelming. And I understand that. But start small. Start small and then give yourself a pat on the back for doing it. Clear a drawer out, one drawer. And the thing is, once you get the energy moving, you might build some momentum and clear more stuff. I know I, I've done that. I've been in that situation before where I've, it's taken me a while to get motivated and then I start, not with a view to doing everything, but I start and then end up doing loads because you just get into the swing of it, so. You could try that. Okay, well, I hope this video's been of some kind of use to somebody. Uh, I think it's I think it's a good thing to do clearing clutter, uh, and that book, it's it's a kick up the backside for people because we'll always collect clutter, won't we? I think. And I haven't touched on a lot of things that she's mentioned. You know, like the emotional connection to things and, and emotional issues we might have. And letting go of things can bring up those emotional issues. But up and out, that's what I say. Better out than in. Yeah, that's it really. <laughs> I mean, I, I could wait her on much longer, but uh, I'm not going to do. I just suggest if you need to know more, want to know more, ha check that book out. Oh, I'm sure there's loads of other books on uh, clutter clearing. It's just good to not have clutter. And, you know, <laughs> I've got a bit of clutter behind me. But I've still, I've still got rid of loads of stuff and I will continue to get rid of things. 
certainly if I move into a camper van I'm going to have to get rid of nearly everything so that'll be interesting see how that goes right mates thanks for watching uh, over and out <laughs>